What's up, YouTube? If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith, and I guess I am now a second year medical student, which is absolutely absurd, but I just finished my first year of medical school, and this video is gonna be a little different than the videos I've done in the past, where I'm talking about study strategies or productivity. In this video, I just wanted to reflect a little bit on this past year. I feel like so much went into me getting into medical school, from the crazy pre-med experience to applying and interviewing, and then when it actually started, so much was going on, from battles for social justice to a global pandemic. And everything just moved so fast that it kind of felt like I blinked and my first year of medical school was already over. So I just think it would be valuable for me and hopefully helpful for you guys if I just took some time to reflect on this year. The highs, the lows, from COVID to imposter syndrome, from networking with surgeons to having surgery of my own, we're just gonna talk about it all. So I have to start by just saying the fact that I started medical school during the COVID-19 pandemic may make my first year of medical school a little different from the norm. First, it was difficult trying to get to know a lot of my classmates because we didn't do a lot of the things that classmates do to get to know each other, like go into class. Many medical students nowadays opt for virtual learning, whether there's a pandemic or not. It just saves a ton of time. You can watch lectures at two times speed and you don't have to get dressed. But I doubt that many students would opt to miss the first day of medical school and just sit at home and watch from your computer. Could you imagine going through a crazy pre-med experience, one of the most strenuous and competitive application processes of all time just to get to medical school, and on the first day just being like, nah, I'm gonna stay home. Well, that's what had to happen, but like anything, you learn to brush off the things that you can't control and focus on the things that you can control, which for me in this case was learning how I was going to succeed in this new environment. Now, I do have to admit that I hadn't necessarily been the best student in undergrad and I definitely didn't know how to study. And here I was studying medicine, a pretty challenging topic alongside some of the most brilliant students in the country at one of the most prestigious hospitals in the world, where literally the word genius is borderline offensive because it just doesn't even measure up to the skill and intellect of the faculty and staff here. Super easy to feel like an imposter in this situation, and I'd be lying if I said I felt like I fit in right away. And it wasn't just not feeling as smart or as trained in certain topics, there also just aren't many black men in medicine. And according to a recent study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, there has been little progress in increasing the proportion of enrollees who are black men. In 1978, black men accounted for 3.1% of the national medical student body, still super small, but by 2019, this was down to 2.9%. And even outside of that, I was married, I had taken time between undergrad and medical school, I didn't grow up wanting to be a doctor, I just didn't feel like my story matched that of the people around me, and this can be the case for a lot of people for so many different reasons. Whether it's your background, you're coming from a different country, you have unique interests, the list can go on and on. But I started to realize just like how dope this really is. Like, let's just take a second and think about this, and I'm so happy that I came across this realization early in my medical school career. But could you imagine anything where everything is the same? Like, let's take your favorite meal, and for the sake of example, let's just take pizza, because if we're being honest, that's everybody's favorite meal. There's so many different ingredients you can add, and it's this hodgepodge of ingredients that actually is what makes pizza so good. Now imagine a pizza that's just dough and sauce. Like at that point, you might as well just throw the whole meal away. Well, don't don't actually throw the whole meal away. We, we don't wanna waste food, but it's, it's not the same. Or if you've ever played team sports, what would the game look like if you removed an entire position? Probably won't be as good. Common sense tells us that diversity isn't just good, but it's actually needed, and the same principle applies to medical school. And again, this can be background, experience, interests, whatever. Like, we spend so much time on our application telling schools what makes us unique, answering that classic, how will you add diversity to our class question, but it's like we're just answering those questions without really internalizing what we're writing. So again, when I started medical school, I got thrown into this environment of really just outstanding people, and for some reason, it made me feel like I had to be somebody else in order to be outstanding. When in reality, me being me and adding my uniqueness to this environment is what ultimately makes the environment great. And I've said this in past videos, but this is when I started to appreciate everybody's genius around me without forgetting my own. And when that happened, it was like I was able to fully function for the first time in this new environment. It was like I had been carrying a weight on my back and I finally let it go so I could start moving and functioning how I knew I was supposed to be. And again, I'm so happy that I came to this realization early in my medical career, but if you're just getting ready to start medical school, 
take a second and review that application that earned you a spot at the school that you're going to and internalize those words and appreciate what you're going to add to this new community of people that you're getting ready to join. Now, something else that I got out of my first year of medical school was just how important self-learning is. And it's not just important, it's actually an expectation that you're going to figure out how you best learn and employ that so that you can best understand the material that you're gonna be presented. Like there's not a lot of handholding going on. In medical school, your education is your responsibility. But what made this something to be excited about was that medical school became the first time in my life that I felt like I wasn't just studying for a grade, but studying to be good at something. Through elementary, middle, high, and even college for some of us, we go because we're told to and we do well, either out of fear for what happens if we don't, or because we're hyper competitive and insecure and wanna do better than the people who are around us. Well, for me, my first two years of medical school are completely pass fail, meaning that a 75% is the exact same thing as a 95%. And the way that my classes were set up were usually something like you have to get a 70% overall as well as a 70% on the final in order to pass the class. There was a little variation in my classes here and there, but the fact that my grades didn't really matter was a completely new experience for me. Now, I have to be very clear about this. Passing a final or a class is very challenging in medical school. Getting a 70% in medical school is not the same thing as getting a 70% in undergrad. In undergrad, you're presented with a limited amount of material, which essentially gives you the opportunity to know everything. This is not the case in medical school. The level of detail and just the overall amount of material you have to learn in medical school to do well on exams is leaps and bounds above what you need to know to do well on an exam in college. And medical school exams, from my experience, are training you through higher ordered questions, which make the exams themselves much more difficult. So not questions like which of the following drugs are used to treat Parkinson's disease. Those questions don't require much thought and in my experience, those were the type of questions I experienced a lot in undergrad. But in medical school, on the other hand, a question may be something like a 60 year old patient walks in complaining of a resting tremor. On physical exam, he has postural instability and a shuffling gait. What is the mechanism of action of the drug you would prescribe? So first you have to be able to recognize that this guy has Parkinson's and then you have to be able to either understand the pathophysiology of Parkinson's and what a drug would do to address these symptoms or you would have to know specific drugs for Parkinson's and how they work. So again, because there's so much to know and it's impossible to know everything about everything, getting a 70% is not a piece of cake. But the fact that there's no pressure to try to know everything actually relieves a lot of the stress related to studying. And because of the way the problems are presented with a real human being involved, it kind of makes you think that knowing about this stuff can really help someone. Now, in this case, this isn't a real person, this is a prompt, but one day in real life, somebody is gonna come to me with questions and looking for help. And the more I know, the more equipped I'll be able to help this person. So it's like medical school completely flipped the script for me. I didn't feel pressure to know everything about everything, but at the same time, I was intrinsically motivated to learn as much as I could. Yes, you're still learning so you can pass your exams and do well on your boards, but the underlying reason for your learning shifts. It doesn't even feel like school anymore, which honestly probably says a little more about our current educational system. But because of that, I have absolutely loved all of my classes. The material has been super interesting, the professors have been incredible, and learning finally feels like it has a purpose. Now, overcoming imposter syndrome and learning how I learn weren't the only challenges that I had to overcome during my first year of medical school. Some of you guys may know that actually the week before one of my exams, I ended up rupturing my Achilles. And I actually had to get surgery the week of my finals. This not only made preparing for my exam more challenging, but for the rest of the school year, I was dealing with some post-operative pain, limited to crutches or a boot, unable to drive myself anywhere, and literally had to practice clinical exam skills with standardized patients looking like I was the one who needed to be seen. But this experience made me realize that even when medical school starts and it seems like everything in your life is revolving around that, life still happens. When you're in medical school, you can almost have this chronic anxiety related to pressure to do well. And many people watching this, whether in medical school or not, probably know exactly how that feels. And you also probably know that anything that pits your success in jeopardy is just unacceptable. Well, sometimes you can't choose what happens to you, you can only choose how you react to it. And this experience, having an injury and surgery, showed me that even though a stress-free and smooth road sounds nice, that is very rarely how things turn out. And that's for our best because through challenges comes growth. I didn't grow or mature as a person and a student in spite of this experience, but because of this experience. And this just reiterated this point to me. Though I won't be necessarily waiting for bumps in the road or stressors to pop up in my path, 
I can expect them to come in some way. And when they do come, they won't be completely blindsiding and I can actually intentionally appreciate the growth that I can get from them. Now, the final thing that I've gotten from my first year of medical school is just how important networking and just connecting with other people is. You know that saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Well, in medical school, it's a little bit of both, but I don't think I appreciated how important the who you know was until I started medical school. When I was a pre-med, I relied so much on the things that I could directly control. This was that what I know, right? Kind of that mentality that my success is solely dependent on my individual input. How much I study, how many hours of shadowing I do, etc. And some of that is similar in medical school. But it's like medical school opened up my eyes to the real world. It emphasized how big a role other people's input can have on my life. Building a network, meeting and learning from people, being a part of a community, all of this stuff is critical and I just didn't know how critical it was until medical school started. And this is the case for anything. I can tell you that the single greatest benefit to this YouTube channel is the community that is generated. Because not only do I get to connect with people, but it opens up opportunities, which open up opportunities, which open up opportunities. Medicine is the exact same way. You meet one person who introduces you to another, who introduces you to another, and all of these people can individually pour into you in various ways. Whether it's mentorship, getting involved in research opportunities, writing letters of rec, or calling a program director for residency directly. Growing your network ultimately is growing the amount of opportunities you have. And this has been one of the best parts of medical school for me. There's a saying in medicine, especially in some of the heavy procedural specialties, and it's see one, do one, teach one. And I absolutely love this because it represents the idea of being brought up by the people in front of you and then turning around and reaching back to bring up the people behind you. The fact that so many residents, fellows, and attendings are willing to play such an impactful role on my career progression and growth is incredible. And starting medical school made me realize just how important it is that I take advantage of all of these opportunities. Overall, this has been an incredible first year of medical school. I've grown immensely, I've learned a ton, and I've connected with some of the coolest people that I could have ever imagined connecting with. And even though COVID made things tough at the beginning, I've even been able to really get to know some of my amazing classmates and start doing things that make me feel more and more like an aspiring doctor and begin learning all of the things that come with physically being in a hospital. And a quick shout out to them because I couldn't imagine a more supportive, encouraging, brilliant, and lively group of human beings than my classmates. But most importantly, I have to shout out my incredible wife, Madison, and actually, actually, babe, Madison. Because I could not have done anything, whether it was medical school, this YouTube channel, anything, without this woman right here. Um, she has held down this first year of medical school so well for me and I could not imagine doing it without her. So biggest shout out to my rock, Madison, right here. Um, I'm tired, y'all. This year has been exhausting, so I am really looking forward to taking the next few weeks off and just to relax and recuperate before this year two gets going. But I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Shout out to you guys for sticking around this long because I know this was a video that was longer than my previous videos. Um, I also don't think that I would have gotten through this first year as well as I did without you guys too. So thank you. Um, but of course, I want to say it. Oh, okay. Do your thing. Keep evolving, and we'll see you guys next time.